Hey everybody, Brian Collins here with Digital Tutors and we're on the expo floor at NAB. Just ran into Chris from Thinkbox and he's going to give us a demonstration of their new plug-in we've got here, Deadline. How are you doing today, Chris? Very good. How are you? Great. You want to show us all about this new plug-in you've got? Sure, definitely. Right. So what we're showing here is the new uh, uh, Deadline 7.1 and we've been doing some work on asset transfer. And uh, this is uh, currently a prototype available to users if they contact us. Uh, essentially, we have a new asset tab. This is 3 Studio Max, and we've got a scene with a number of different assets. And we want an experience where an end user could submit a job to a remote location and render it easily, and everything would just work, sort of click button simple. So in the new asset tab, we have the ability to check boxes, synchronize your assets, and you choose what tool you want to synchronize them with, what file transfer tool. We're going to offer a number of different tools. We've added support for File Catalyst. We're here at the booth right now. And uh, this allows us to transfer files very quickly and efficiently. So we have a remote uh, file store location set up. And then we're doing a scene introspection, which is giving us a list of all the assets. So right here, we've got a list of the assets in the scene. And that could be uh, textures, bitmaps, uh, XMesh files, particle files, or external 3D assets that need whatever the scene needs to render. And then Edwin has gone ahead and submitted the job. And the first thing that's happened is the local file store has been staged with all of the assets that are needed to work on the remote file store. So if we jump over to uh, the deadline monitor here, we can see the job has been queued up. And inside the job, we have a, a uh, task, which is our file transfer task. So when that file transfer task starts running, it'll start processing and moving the files over. So if you open up the remote file store, This is actually on the remote server, on Google Cloud. We can see that the files are starting to come in right now. And if we right click on uh, File Catalyst Monitor, we can actually see the processing. There you go. So this is the orange is outbound files. So what's happened is we've basically submitted a job that's a transfer job. It's taking the list of assets. It's transferring the assets to remote location. And we do that because we have dependencies inside Deadline 7.1. So if we click on the, uh, the actual job grouping inside Deadline, can we see the dependency tree, Edwin? Oh, perfect, thank you. So this is the dependency. So we've got a number of assets that are linked to the dependency, and each one of those assets has to exist and be correct in the remote store for it to fire the next job, which is the max rendering job. So once the assets are actually on the remote location, then we'll launch a 3D rendering job, and that job will happen on that remote computer. And you can see at the bottom here, we've got a number of different machines on Google Compute. So we have uh, quad cores, 16 cores, you can map different VM images inside Deadline to different machines and then group them so you can submit them. You can also have a balancer that will auto scale the machine so you could queue up 10 or 100 machines as much as you require. So you can see here that some of the assets are already completed and we're still waiting on a number of the other assets. One of the other things that's interesting is when we've actually submitted a job and it exists on the remote store, can you right click on the Kohler job or what? Uh, Which one? The, uh, Maxwell job? Uh, Maxwell. Yeah, right click and let's change the group or the, show them how we can change the file. All right, let's so when it, Maxwell here. So in the hook show, the Yeah. So one of the things that's interesting is the job's already submitted to the repository. You can actually right click on the job and then change settings. So we, we expose a lot of the parameters. So you can change resolution or other details. So you can see here, we're modifying the file that already exists. It's already rendered, but we can actually change the resolution, the sampling time, and then just right click and requeue the job. And you don't have to resync any of the assets or resync the job to the cloud because it already exists. So how's our render going? Render our transfer is still going over, but let's still just take a look at this. Uh... Sometimes the show floor is a little slow here with our transfer. <laughs> We're showing the three Studio Max settings on the remote job right now. Right. Yeah. So what's going on is we're transferring, we're at the show floor. It's taking a little longer to transfer all those assets. But the job will actually fire when it's complete. We have another job there. It's going to return the image to the local, local location. Oh, it's starting up the 3D rendering job now? Yeah. So let's go back to the uh, dependency view. And you can see now that the dependency has triggered. The rendering is now green because all the assets are local. And the final job is going to be a submission job that's going to return the rendered image to the local machine. So you can just simply one click, submit, launch a file, render remote location, and get your image back. That's pretty much it.
That sounds great, Chris. Uh, do you guys got any uh, other announcements you have here at NAB? Well, we've launched Deadline 7.1 and we've added a number of support for new applications. Uh, some of them are really relevant to uh, this industry, but a number are for external tools that are in arch architecture, engineering, and construction. Okay. Um, we're pretty excited about a lot of the new features. For example, font synchronization. Mm -hmm. So we have a tool that lets you synchronize fonts to all of the different machines so that you don't have the problem when you're rendering that our fonts are changing between frame to frame and so on. So there's a lot of new features. People should check it out. We have a website, thinkboxsoftware.com, and uh, email us for any questions. That sounds great. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Chris. All right. Thank you very much.